Hello everybody and welcome to, well, one of the more demanding missions I have ever did. This here is another mission to EVE, but here we're not going to explore some biomes or plant some flags. No, we're trying to bring back some ore. And not just a tiny amount of ore, we're talking about a big ore tank with 1500 tons of ore. And while this beast of a rocket ascends into the heavens, you can see all those stage separations going on. There we got another one, some boosters saying goodbye. I had to do some weird configuration with the boosters in order to get this thing into orbit, because, well, the entire craft weighs a lot because it has to take, well, about 300 tons worth of lander to EVE. Yeah, in order to get that much ore back up into orbit, you need a big vehicle. And in order to transport a big vehicle, you need an even bigger vehicle. And there we go, we have some uh, thermal radiators and a communications unit hidden inside those tiny fairings up top. We also have some solar panels. This mission, by the way, is completely done with autonomous probes. So in order to th for that to work, of course, I need to stay in contact with Kerbin and therefore we need some relays and those are already in place. And of course there are some antenna on the spaceship. There we go, hello Eve. So we're trying to get in orbit over here. So we're firing our nuclear engines once more. I think I've over-engineered this craft quite a bit because uh, there has been, well, quite a lot of Delta V left after I have finished my respective circularization burns. Over here you can see that I'm trying to decrease my inclination, which is working perfectly according to Kerbal Engineer Redux. And the reason I'm doing that is because I tr will try to land my lander close to the equator and also get back up into a 90 degree orbit. So yeah, this should be the most efficient way to do things. Okay, time to decouple this little tiny lander thingy. There we go. I... well, I'm using my usual method of EVE landers, which is land that thing empty, mine some ore, and then ref uh, refuel it on the surface. But I left a little bit of fuel inside so I can do the deceleration burn with this thing itself. And that's what we're doing here right now. Okay, you can see the trajectory mod projecting my landing somewhere in the Explodium Sea. I never get tired of that name. But in reality we're going to land, well, quite a bit further inland as you have seen here. Okay, we're diving through the atmosphere with our heat shields extended and some calamity occurred. We've lost a solar panel and two or three of the air brakes, which is not so bad. I had four solar panels to begin with, so I have three now. That should be sufficient. I only hope those parachutes don't break again. This is not my first attempt, as you might imagine. Okay, parachutes out. Those are the big ones. Of course, using drogue chutes to slow down the initial velocity. Then I have uh, set up the parachutes in such a way that they open in pairs according to their respective altitude. So some open at 4,000 meters, others at 3,500, then at 2,750, and so on, until we are at 1,000 meters above the surface, when all parachutes, in theory, should be open. Okay, this thing is slowing down significantly now. Still not a safe velocity, I might add. This will damage my vehicle, 
but fortunately we still have some fuel left and I intend to use it for a small powered descent moment at the end of the landing. But first let's get rid of those heat shields. Yeah, that's always a bit tricky when you overlap them like I did. And, well, most of the times I attempted this landing, it destroyed some other part of my rocket. Fortunately, this time it didn't. Okay, while those heat shields tumble down to the floor, we've already activated our engines. And here we go. This is the moment of truth. Let's try to slow this down significantly before we run out of fuel and... Yeah, this looks good. Nothing exploded, nothing fell off. Well, except for those parachute towers, which I don't need anymore. Okay now, time to extend our drill assembly and solar array so we have enough power while using the refinery and drills to drill for some ore. There we go, and well this took a while so I skipped ahead through the magic of editing. Time to ditch those drills and refineries. And well unfortunately I also lost my antenna which was mounted to the, the drill assembly, but fear not, the transfer craft is still in orbit and it acts as a relay so I can steer this. Yay! Okay, this is now well, the tricky part, trying to get into orbit with a hugely uh, heavy and overpowered and weird staged spacecraft. And I lost one of the stages because the previous stage crashed into it. I hope that's still enough Delta V in there that I can get into orbit. Okay, we're now on the, well, crucial part of the spacecraft, really. So this is really now getting interesting because, well, we are dropping stages left and right and once we are on our ultimate stage, well, it will be the moment of truth if this is the ascent that will get us 1500 tons of ore back from EVE. Or 1500 units. I think it's 15 tons of ore, not 1500 tons. So. I exaggerated a bit. Okay, now leveling out, we're high up in the atmosphere of EVE, which is very dense. And we're dropping our final attached boosters. This was of course asparagus staged for more efficiency. And we are lifting up nicely, our apoapse is being raised sufficiently. Now we are out of fuel and we are on our final stage, so this is it. If I don't make it with this, it's, well, game over actually. Okay, 1500 units of ore back from EVE. Let's see if we can get this thing into orbit. And yes, this actually looks promising. Well, let's get our apps a bit higher so our rendezvous will be easier with the main spaceship. This looks promising. Yes, okay now. Time to uh, ditch the top of the vehicle, which I don't need anymore, and it's empty anyway, so it's dead weight. We've seen before, the tank is full, there we go. So yeah, time to raise the rapper apps, and yes, we are safe, in a safe parking orbit around EVE. So the hard part is over. But the interesting part, which is getting the ore back to Kerbin, starts now. Interesting because I kind of designed a little surprise over here because I don't uh, plan on using the entire transfer craft. I'm just going to use a little bit of it. Boom, and well, it's stuck a little, but that doesn't matter, because we can move this on its own power. 
you can see here it's got an antenna and it's got some monopropellant RCS modules. First of all, we have to activate that monopropellant. But in order to not, you, uh, not lose any of our precious liquid fuel and oxidizer, we have to shut down those Werner engines. There we go. And then, of course, it's time to dock with the ore transporter or whatever you want to call it. I don't really have a name for this thing. I've called it the Eve Ore Riser. But if you have any suggestions for a nice name for it, please leave them in the comments below. There we go, we have our encounter with Kermain. I've skipped ahead, of course, a bit once again. And once we've reached our maneuver node, which is right about now, we're going to do our burn towards home. So the vector engine is, of course, supremely powerful and is quite enough to propel this thing up to the necessary velocity so we can get our interplanetary transfer from EVE back to Kerbin. There we go, we have our encounter. We have to do some small adjustment burn later, which you can see here. And we are now quite well underway to Kerbin and the circulariza circularization burn shouldn't be any problem with the Delta V we have left in our tanks. There we go. Boom! And now we've brought home some more. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And that's how you get some big ore tank back to Kerbin. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.